Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club on BET. And we got a special guest with us this morning. Big Big legend, Capo. Capo is here, Jim Jones. What's up with y'all, man? What's up, Jim? Y'all still getting up hella early. (laughs) (laughs) Vamp life, you just going to sleep? Definitely. Definitely just definitely got an hour of sleep before I got here, but it's good. How you feeling, man? I'm feeling pretty good. I mean, shit. For for what it's worth, man, life is good. I can't complain. I, I've been through hell and back, but I'm 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 doing pretty, I'm doing all right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, somebody told us today, and I, I, for for whatever reason, I thought it was longer, but they said you've been in the game twenty years. More than that. That's what I feel like. I feel like it's more than twenty, right? Cam got signed in ninety seven. Yeah. You know what I mean, and before Damn. that, we was outside. So we've been outside for a long time, but yeah, we signed started in ninety seven. So what's that? Uh, 26 years. 26 years. 26 years. Still making quality music. Mm-hmm. How you always thinking of ways to reinvent yourself, man? How to reinvent, that's, that's just it. Just trying to stay relevant. That's one thing you gotta do is you gotta learn how to reinvent yourself. You gotta learn how to stay relevant. You gotta learn how to keep it lit. You gotta, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And then at the same time, you can't be out here looking old, chasing the young people. So it's a medium that you gotta figure out where to meet at, you know what I mean? So. Jim always got some, some, some new music. Jim sent me a, Something a couple days ago, Jim sent me something like one, once every couple of months, and every time he sent it, it's crazy. Yeah, we working. I yeah. sent you the Chris Parker record. Yeah, Chris Parker record. one. Yeah, but where, where he's um, he redid a, a '80s boom bap type of record. Da, 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 where he's flowing on da, 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 da. And um, when I heard it, I called Jim immediately. I said, Jim, I got an idea. I said, you know, you know, I do but these car shows. I said, why don't we do a, a, a mixtape album for the car shows where we do like the boom bap so people could ride to? Mm. So that's gonna be one of the joints that we, we, we do. I'm waiting on the beats. No, nah, 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 I, they coming. I, I, I got them. <laughs> I'm still waiting. Because he wants the selection. <laughs> You're trying to get a, so a, like a, a selection of boom bap type of '80s, '90s type of record. So I want a, a dope selection to, to to do it to. I feel like nostalgia's back. It is. Like, you know what I mean? Which Because it's, it's, it was a classic timeless era, so it feel like it never left. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it's a whole new generation on that wave. Especially with, with, with y'all, uh, uh, Jim, with Dipset. Well, music always goes. Mm-hmm. Music is 360, like everything else in life. But it goes, comes back around and things like that. And with New York music, it's different from anybody else's music. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So we got, like, our own sound sonically and things like that. And just to hear, like, the people starting to rap again and they going on aggressive beats and things like that it makes me feel it makes me feel good right? in New York we we we've been out the loop musically for a long time mm-hmm. and right now it feels good to see the resurgence that we have when it comes to us getting inside the musical race you know what I mean shout out to like- all the artists that's popping out here right now and and putting on for New York City I tip my hat to you I know it ain't easy you feel like you can enjoy uh your success now cuz I know one time you know, getting into clubs, it was 50 of y'all, and, and then, you know, they banned you from clubs, but now it's like, do you feel it's like you can I mean, enjoy it more? Yeah, I've, I mean, yeah, I get to sit back and look at all the things that I've went through in life and all the accolades, everything. I mean, there's been a time where you couldn't get in no clubs, but just looking back on my history, is, it makes me smile and things like that, on, on, on the impact we had on people, looking back on all the stuff the diplomats did, shit, man, it feels good. Yeah, what it, feels, it feels like nobody can perform in Harlem now without bringing uh, somebody, either the whole <laughs> dip set out or somebody from the dip set out. We was, we actually was in the building the other night when Cam was performing. Oh, you was there? Okay, okay. Me and Joel was in the crowd watching the show. We came out to uh, support mysteriously. Cam came out. Did you know Cam was coming out or was it a surprise to you too? Super surprise. Everything with Cam to me is a surprise. I don't got no, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It ain't like it used to. It ain't like I know what his moves is and things like that. You know? Wish my be- wish the best to him in all his endeavors and things like that. I see he's doing a uh, sports show right now. Y'all got the craziest relationship because I swear, sometimes I feel like the dip sets on tour, everything is good, and then it's like, no, nah, I had no idea he was coming out. Because even with the Drake, y'all all came out together for the Drake show. Mm-hmm. And how was that when, when Drake reached out and called and said he, he wanted y'all guys to be a part of it? Um, That was dope. Shout out to Drake, shout out to Chubbs. I got a great relationship with him. I got to speak to them early about that. And um, I think I put it out there in the air. Y'all coming to Harlem, bro. He like, oh, we got to go up. Um, shout out to them boys. That was a hell of a moment mm-hmm. uh, for for us, for Diplomats, for Harlem. For all the work we put in for all the years, vice versa, you know what I mean? Pretty dope, pretty dope. Even with that, Drake is a branch off the family tree, though, because you know, I think people forget you know how Wayne was running he's, around with Dipset back in the yeah, day. He's young you know? money, and, <laughs> and, Wayne, and, and Wayne is our buzzing. You heard? Shout mm-hmm. out to Wayne, man. Shout out to the whole Cash Money. Um, Watching Wayne the other day inside the Apollo. 
forget how many hits that boy got. That nigga yeah. was that nigga did like two hours worth of straight just hits with a band in back of him. Pretty dope, man. Shout out to Weezy. And there was an era of Wayne where was that that whole rock star lifestyle that was that was Jim. That, yeah, that, that was, we birth, we birthed that rock star lifestyle that's still popping right now and things like that. So you know what I mean. As I said, the impact that you have, you never know until you be able to get here and be able to look back at it sometimes. Be like, damn, we did that. 100% did that. When you see somebody like Cameron being sued for wearing his own <coughs> mink and his own pink hat, do, do, does that make you concerned that somebody might take a picture that they took of you and you post it and they, they sue you for something like that? Because sure, that's his face. I got, I got sued for the um, Harry Fraud album cover. I had to change the album cover. They was trying to rip my socks off off a young gentleman that I gave an opportunity to come to my, uh, to be around me to take pictures and things like that. And you know, I mean, you know how I go and people end up getting slick and talking about, nah, that was my picture. And, Ain't know. that the wildest thing? Cause that's your face, that's your likeness. Yeah, it's very wild. I mean, in some situations, you know, but in my situation, in my case, I was like, yo, I thought this was an agreement that we had, but you photographers get tricky when it comes to those pictures. Like, you know what I mean? They they try to charge you up certain amount of money to, for a picture of you. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just crazy, man, so. Yeah, don't put. It, it doesn't surprise me that somebody is suing them for that picture and things like that. That's how they're moving out here right now. Mm -hmm. and I saw you get back in your director bag with uh, with John. <coughs> that was dope. Yeah, shout out to John, man. That was dope. Me, call me one day like, are you still directing? I'm like, yeah, but I usually direct all my videos or videos for my artists and things mm -hmm. like that. He like, I got something I want you to direct. It's not necessarily a video. And then he told me, I was like, oh man, that's crazy. Like, I want to shoot some scenes from Juice Over and. I got all the artists, I got all the actors from the original movie, That's Juice. Dope. Mm -hmm. I was like, you got Tupac too? He like, nah, I, ain't, I couldn't get Pac. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't get Pac. <laughs> but I got everybody else, so you mm -hmm. know. But directing, directing Queen Latifah uh, definitely was, the highlight of the whole thing for me, you know, you get to direct the queen, that's that's big right there. Not just take nothing away from Omar Epps and, you know what I mean, but I'm just saying, Queen Latifah is Queen Latifah, man. I Absolutely. Can't do this, you know what I mean? Somebody get cop on some water too, man. Yeah, please. You the man here coughing, damn it. Mm -hmm. It's early, I ain't been to sleep yet. <laughs> Been smoking all day. Happy 420. Yes. Get your lungs right. Now, now I heard you talking about doing a dipset TV show. Oh, um, no. A movie. Oh, um, no. I wanted to. I wanted going to start to create a show called Five H, which is based I would on say your the, life, my life in okay. Five H before we actually got the fame and went on to be being Dipset. So uh -huh. that whole time inside of Five H, when Cam and Mason, everybody was living with me inside my grandma's apartment and things like that, very instrumental to our success. And so much wild things were going on mm -hmm. inside of that Five H apartment. I think people will be very uh, enthused to see some of these scenes about our history coming up. Loose, loosely based on- um, Loosely based. Lo loosely based, you I'm, don't want to get nobody in trouble out that's here. That's all I was gonna say, the statute of limitations up? You, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so, um, that was a long time ago on the yeah. projects of 5H, but yeah, I mean, we got so much history um, and with all of these shows, with the Wu-Tang show mm -hmm. and all these shows- BMF, yeah. Depicting the hip hop culture and things that went on in the past. And, all the stuff that we've been into, especially for New York City, I think is only right. Will we get a, a, a Dipset documentary? W would you guys come together so it could be done? Because it's, it's history. Like you're watching the Murder Inc. documentary. And Somebody got a document. So many different documents. Snoop's doing his. and I w That would be a Snoop a doing a biopic. A biopic, yeah. yeah. You think we would get that? <sighs> a watered down version, maybe. By watered down? I don't know, man. I got this whole thing. It's like... Taboo almost to think about a whole a real diplomat a documentary. I think people need to see that though. Well, you don't think you, you don't think y'all ready to tell the whole story yet? I mean, there's just so many different moving parts to that story. You know uh -huh. what I mean? So it's like, what what part do we actually tell? Some things might can still get us in trouble. But it'll be a hell of a documentary. Mm -hmm. It'll be a hell of a TV show. Anything it could be a hell of a sitcom because we all comedians in the, in our travel um. <laughs> I don't know what's going on right now. It's 420. Your it's lungs 420. are full of something good. My 420. <laughs> but yeah, we got a lot. Of, we got a lot of dope stuff to talk about. But documentary is kind of hard. We try to put out a little small documentary not too long ago and things like that. But you know, people really want to see the real thing, the, the the real story. They want to get into the midst of the turmoil that happened and all of that type of stuff. So you know, I would love to see how, you know you guys meeting and 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 how y'all got on and and the relationship with Mace and how y'all signed and. Yeah. Through the, the trials and tribulations, and I would all love to see all like, that. All of that is like five H. That's all a high school and just graduating mm -hmm. out of high school era and things like that. And Cam and Mace go in the same high school. Me and Cam living in 
on the first half on the same side, and they being from the west side, like all that was around the high school in the five H days, and then when Cameron Waste Cameron Mace went away to college, they both got kicked. To the out. mic, to the mic, Jim. <coughs> when Cam and Mace went to college, they both got kicked out. And when they got kicked out from school, they ended up coming to live with me at my grandmother's house, where I recently them? passed away. Yeah, both of them. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! So Cam, Mace, Dwells, few other famous artists that uh, made it pretty successful in this game all came out my grandmother's house. She provided the shelter for us, so we wouldn't have to be in the streets at night. That's crazy. Yeah. So that's what the whole Five H story is about. Exactly what you're talking about. The very uh, humble beginnings mm -hmm. of who we were before we became diplomats and Jim Jones and Killer Cam. I never you know knew that. What's, so what's your relationship with Mace now? It's, it's weird to see that at one time you were beefing with all these guys when they were in your grandmother's house. Y'all grew up with each other. Like Y'all lived with each other. Yeah, 100%. We definitely lived with each other. We definitely grew up with each other. We know each other very personally from since we were younger. Um, as we got older, we all kind of separated when our our own ways and things like that, but we started together wholeheartedly. Uh, uh, you, you've always been a visionary. Did you see it back then when you was in apartment yeah, 5H? Yes, I, I seen it before 5H. I seen it when, um, when Cam and God bless the dead, his cousin Bloodshed used to be uh, freestyling on First Avenue. I used to mm -hmm. give Bloodshed quarters to freestyle. Like, now you got to pay me a quarter for a freestyling. And um, high school, they was playing basketball, but Cam and May started rapping and they were pretty good at the rap and especially mm -hmm. coming out of Harlem at the time. Then you had Herb McGruff, Big L, they were all from the same neighborhood. So they had some very early lessons from some very dope people inside of the game and things Herb like McGruff that. Herb McGruff was hard. Mm -hmm. Super yeah, hard. Before so I start five, before Children start in the five. corn, they started. Mm -hmm. So they've been in the game. They they, they started this, they've been doing this for a long time with Cam, Cam, Cam and Mason. I definitely tip my hat to them. They were the first of our, out of our a bunch coming up in Harlem that were uh, rapping and was ahead of the game in that. And, you just breezed over there. I was. I said, "What's your What's your relationship with Mace? Y'all, you and Mace good now?" I don't care about Mace. I don't care for Mace too much. You heard? Tell Mace go say some prayers. Word up. <laughs> you heard? My deck may. Let me stop. The show is entertaining. <laughs> that, that is what it is. Is entertaining though. What? That is what it is. Show. I like seeing um, you do the weatherman shit. Them do that. Like yeah, for the show the size of your personality. It is. They they definitely uh they definitely very funny. Always been a group of comedians. I can't take that away from them. And they very knowledgeable about basketball. They both grew up playing basketball. Mm -hmm. Um, Mace was cool. Cam was definitely a, 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 had a chance to go to the NBA. I can't say that without with no hate and nothing in my heart. Boy was dumb nice from mm -hmm. since he was younger doing mm -hmm. playing starting in Rucker at age fifteen. They calling him Cam the All American. Him and Mace went to the championship in Madison Square Garden and things like that for uh, Manhattan Center and stuff like that. So they were some ball. They were some ballers. So to see them on the, <coughs> pardon me, to see them on the um, television show. What is it? What it is? It is what it is. It is yeah. what it is. Pretty yeah. dope. I hope they get a check for that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And you know, you got the uh, back in my prime album with Hitmaker. I, I love that title. Do you do you feel that way? Do you feel like you back in your prime? Mm. For like the third time. But yeah, it feels good. I mean, I've been through so much to still be able to make music at this capacity and still be in the game, um, still getting records played on the radio, mm -hmm. still making top 40 hits and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen a lot of people come and go, especially with being in the game so long or come, get to a, stance, a standstill. Um, I'm blessed to be able to keep going and keep being able to make this good music. Um, shout to all my artists, BGVL. Um, all the youngsters that be around me to keep me uh keep me in tune with what's going on. It's a, it's a medium you gotta have, you know what I right, mean? Right, like right. you gotta, it's, it's we gotta guide each other. So that's where I'm at. Like, now you, you where, where, where was where was Capo's first prime? What would you consider as, as a solo, just solo? What would you consider your first prime? Because you said for like the third time. Oh, uh, my first prime. My first prime was when I was in the streets. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't musically. That wasn't musically. <laughs> that wasn't musically. Right, my right, second right. prime was when I was able to do the music. My third prime was where I'm at right now. Was it was it balling? Or certified gangster? Balling, I would say I read oh, certified I, I, gangster too. Yeah. Well certified gangster was my introduction. Mm -hmm. I was kinda hot off the intro stuff like that. But I think that moving into balling and hustlers poem was kinda like me moving into my first prime and when I was at the top of the game at that time and things like that. And then you know, they build you up to knock you down. To the mic, to the mic, mm -hmm. If they build you up to knock you down, if you're not strong enough to persevere, you won't be here mm -hmm. next year. And, you know, I'm still here, so God bless. Now, you know, you were trending the last uh, couple of weeks for, for some comments that you made. 
One was the- Which uh, ones? Well, we're going to go Word, like I was just talking. <laughs> I had an interview last night. I had to tell him, listen, bro, I'm, I'm almost at to the point where I'm not doing any more interviews because it seemed like- <laughs> Anything that I say is taken way out of proportion mm-hmm. right now. Like I can't even have an opinion nope. and, and this this going wild. Like what's going on out here? Like I didn't know my voice to be that important inside of this culture that people were taking. Oh, stop! Come on, Jim. Come on, come on, come on. Have you seen what's going on in the yeah, last couple of weeks? Like, come on. That's, that's what the I can't even breathe. Red. Yeah, like he go red. Oh my god! Like, like, no, no, red. <laughs> like yo, what? Like yo, bro. It's, damn, I can't have an opinion out here. It's almost scary. Like shit. The first one was uh, Drake and Hove, and I think uh, I, I'm not sure who asked it. The interviewer asked you about Drake or Hove, who is is more relevant or who is in the prime. One of those questions, and you I think said it was the same interview. Drake. Yeah, I said Drake. Now, and why that, did you say Drake over a, Hove? See, here we go. I'm just down. I'm, I'm, I'm scared to even talk right now. Like, everybody gets some bomb threats there. So it's like, <laughs> you said Drake over Hove again on the radio? Let me stop. Um, I mean, where we at right now? Like, we can't take nothing away from Hove. Correct. He has done too much for the game, especially coming from a dope boy's perspective. Um, he showed what we can do from having nothing to making something. His business acumen has taken him to levels that we probably can never even reach. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. But when is the last time he been outside, really inside of this game, when it comes to doing the music? Like, when the last whole album you heard? Four, four, four. When was that? What, 2016, 2016, or the one with? And then uh, before that, when was the last? Time? Like, Drake consistently, out. Drake, Drake consistently been putting out music at a high level mm-hmm. since he actually came inside of the game, and where he at right now, as far as what he's been doing for the game, and how many artists he has helped put on in this industry. Come on now, let's 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 we can run them down the line for all the hardest hottest artists that we love right now. Drake has had a hand in helping them with their success. Like he's just done a lot, and for the culture right now, he's who's 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 beating them right now at this game. Like, yeah, I think I just think it's like when we had these conversations, like it's like it's the difference between Jordan and LeBron. No, no doubt. I'm a, exactly. I'm a, I'm a, jo- yes, I'm a Jordan it. fan, and what Jordan has done for the game can't be duplicated in any way. Absolutely. But right now it's about Braun. Jordan is not in the game no more. We can't compare them because they're not playing. He's not playing. But Braun is at a whole nother level that I don't think Jordan can really touch when it comes to playing basketball. He's done some things that we haven't seen. He's gone from team to team to team and won championships. That has never been done before, especially as being a team. Back three feet. That's never been done. That's before. cool, but he was on one team. You know how hard it is to go from Miami, like, oh, we're going to LA and get a championship. Oh, I'm, I'm going back to Cleveland and get a championship. Like, he a team leader that went to different teams that weren't the best teams and still was able to pull off these championships. I think that's easy. But he did that with... You think that's easy to pick up and go from team to team? I I think it's harder to be with one team and dominate... How? Look at at Curry and them. But even Curry hasn't done a back-to-back three-peat. Jordan did a three-peat, left for two Mm -hmm. years, came back, did it again. And and when LeBron... With new pieces. When LeBron went to Miami, he wasn't by himself. He had Wade and Bosh. Yeah. When he went to Cleveland, he had Kyrie. And in L.A., he had 80 and... That's what I'm, that's what I, that's why I think it's easy. We have some Michael Jordan fans here, I see. No, 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 but... but <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I see but, you have some Michael Jordan fans. But I also fans. look at LeBron as LeBron got the scoring title, and he he, he does more with assists and more than rebounds. Michael Jordan scoring title. You know what I mean? What he got the, the, the... Oh, the all-time. all-time scoring, you know what I mean? So it, it's a little bit of both, you know what I mean? So I'm not mad at either one of them being mentioned as goals. Wait a minute. So how many years Jordan played? 13. 13. How many 15 if you count the Wizards. How many years? 20. 20 for LeBron. 20. And when so Jordan think, did less. When y'all think you're going to stop? When, when do you think he's going to stop? I think two more years. Do you years. think he'd be, the only, he'd be one of the first people to play on the same team as his son? Like, he's doing He's happen. definitely going to do that. He's that doing happen. things that's, come on, man. Like, you know what I mean? So, but I guess we get stuck in these things between apples and oranges. I'm going with Drake right now for the leading uh, rapper of all times so when mm-hmm. it comes to statistics. Like, so people, like, Jay has not been the biggest selling artist throughout all his career, you know? Nah. Like so mm-hmm. like so it's like different things that we can base this off when it comes to why we why are we even having Drake in the same conversation yeah. as Jay. Like mm-hmm. did that sound better? Why are we even having Drake in the same conversations as Jay? Because Drake is out here going hammer. Mm-hmm. Like he's no, he Drake deserves to be you, in the conversation. You did like yeah, yeah. like let's talk about it. Like he sold she sells shit loads of records. Correct. Mm-hmm. Every time he drops. A lot of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And if he had a point where we're doing stream. If these we were back in the day where we were doing just records, how many records you think he'd be coming out? Do you think he'd be doing five, six hundred thousand that first week like everybody else doing a million, million two back in the day? Like, 
You don't think he'd be slaughtering? Yeah, I think Jay would have did more back then if we had streaming and sales. I think so. But I also think Jay was, see, this is, 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 is both, right? Because I love Drake and I love Hov. But I think Hov had a more influence on the culture. 100%. At that time, it, the, the culture know, we, was just, be, we were still coming up. There was a lot to learn. And Jay right. seemed to always figure it out. He seemed to figure it out before everybody else and things like mm-hmm. that. We, we're not, I'm like, I don't want people to sit up here and make it seem like I'm hating on Jay. Because I'm not. Mm-hmm. You dig? They ask me a question, and I'm talking about what's going on right, right now, now, right now, and what I can see, mm-hmm. and things like that. Like, if you ask the average 19, 20 year old kid to sing some Jay Z records, they might not be able to sing them Jay records. Mm-hmm. If you ask the average 30 year old re- kid to sing some Drake records, they're going to know Absolutely. some Drake mm-hmm. records. Mm-hmm. I mean, even if you're talking about right now, most relevant might be NBA Young Boy. Might be one and of he, them. And he don't he don't even Low Baby or whatever. record on radio. Huh? I'm saying might be a low baby or NBA. If you yeah. ask a young So I right, so then when I was saying mm-hmm. NBA Young Boy, I would put NBA Young Boy on the top fifty list be- before Pusha T. I wasn't really that trying was to be funny. That, that was crazy though, Jim. They I wasn't mad, really trying to for that too. And they was all, mad, all but time. I wasn't I wasn't really trying to be funny in that way. I was being funny in that way, but I wanted people to know that nobody like right now was like NBA young boy or Drake when it comes to them type of mm-hmm. you know what I mean like yeah, them yeah, boy yeah. like but nobody really talks about NBA young boy and that boy don't need no radio stations he don't need nothing he come out and drop 19 <laughs> albums a year all of them go <laughs> multi platinum mm-hmm. he probably sitting on 200 million lord knows how much money that little man is sitting mm-hmm. on right now nobody ever puts him in these conversations of who is really on the upper level of this hip hop culture and he is one of them I feel like y'all saw that early too with with with, with diplomats back in the day, like the in, the indie route, especially in New York. People wasn't trying to go the indie route in New York. You, you I feel like y'all saw that early. We saw that because we ain't really had no choice. I had a conversation with that with somebody too. Um, they didn't want to give me no deal like Rockefeller, and uh, we knew the power of independence from us traveling around the country and things like that. And you know, telling Cam like, man. No matter what type of music we put out, we put this music out, they're gonna come by because they're diplomats. They're not gonna come by because we signed a Def Jam and things like that. And mm-hmm. once we really figured that out, we was like, sky's the limit. We can go anywhere and put this diplomat stamp on it, and people gonna buy it. And that's how we end up at Koch and going into the whole independent lane. It didn't work for us pretty much. Mm-hmm. Well, looking back though, I signed a lot of crazy contracts. Or bad um, deals, or um. Yeah, bad deals. I would say they, they're, they're pretty bad deals, but for me, they were good at the time because it was putting me in a position where I was taking myself out the street and didn't have to have be myself in the risk of things that I was going through at the time and things like that. So I, I took every, every deal I got was kind of crazy and things like that, but I knew where I wanted to be and I knew where I needed to go. Um, I wouldn't advise anybody to take the road that I took to get to where I'm at today. I would say that. Um, most people are bitter about the deals that they signed. I wasn't, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Because I knew what I wanted, where I wanted to be. I wanted to get in this game, and mm-hmm. I figured once I get in this game, I can make a, a way for myself once I'm in. You know, it's a way different than being out the game and in the game. You know what I mean? So I knew these deals were going to put me in the game where I can now rub shoulders with other people, other businesses, make a lot of ancillary money, so I can really show people what I'm about. I was willing to take that risk, and that's what I did. Looking somebody back at told it, me one time that Jim. That balling sold so many records for Koch that Koch couldn't even they couldn't even pay you. Yeah, they still owe me money on balling. Somebody told me Jesus. That. So they get so you ended up getting a job there or something. something there like was a lot of the, different things they were doing, a lot of sketchy different things and shit like that that they were doing up there at the time. Um but shout out to Allen, man. They 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 gave me a chance. I was able to become more successful, more rich than I ever thought I would ever ever be and things mm-hmm. like that. So you gotta think about it from that perspective, man. I'm, I'm, I'm not mad at all. I'm happy for every mistake I made. I'm happy for every bad contract I made because I'm still here and I'm doing a lot better than a lot of people I've seen that were mm-hmm. doing way better than me at the time. How much do you think they still owe you? <laughs> um, I, I couldn't tell you, man. I, 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 I did a lot. Well, I got paid a lot off the publishing check, so I got paid for that public. It, it makes up, man. I made some money off. I still make money off of sinks right now and shit like that off, off the ball. And, like, comes in with a good check, but then I got to split it with Allen and things like that. Mm-hmm. So I was saying, look, looking back, what's one thing that you wish you would have did differently? Was is it musically? Is it the whole TV? Because Love and Hip Hop was based off of you and Chrissy at the time. Yeah. What what what's one thing you wish you would have did differently? If anything. Differently. I 
If you would have known. One thing I would have did differently. I Especially like, the love and hip hop, because that was pretty much based yeah. off of your story. Well, love and hip hop came to a point where I wasn't ready to compromise my dignity for nobody. You heard? I don't know if it was pride getting in front of me or was my my dignity getting back at me and things like that. But I wasn't ready to compromise, and that was one of the reasons why we left. Um, the season that we actually left was this, was was the next season turnover. We were going to get all the bells and whistles, all our producer credits all the ownership and all that type of shit. And it just so happens, so many things happened right before that happened that we were, felt way better than walking away from what we had and actually sticking there and let people think they could handle us anyway and things like that. Um, But hey, at the time that I did uh, Love & Hip Hop, people were looking at me like I was crazy, like I had two heads, like why are you doing reality TV? This is taboo, oh, this is so bad for you. And all these rappers and things like that, they were coming at my head and things like that. and then. Lo and behold, every single person that told me that I was doing something wrong actually was on TV on a reality show. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, we I've created a lane that became so profitable for both networks and people that people just started diving in, like even right now. You know what I mean? And it's funny when I see a lot of these uh, hip, uh, love of hip hop contestants or talent when they see me, they, well, if you don't give me a pound and say thank you for this check, man, because if you wasn't for me, you wouldn't be nothing. You wouldn't have a dollar to your name when it comes to uh, reality TV. But it was fun, man. Shouts to Mona Scott, very smart lady. She was smart enough to know where to be, and I didn't know. I didn't have the smarts. You heard so. And that literally started because Jim was shooting a reality show mm -hmm. that he didn't want to shoot, and so they started shooting a show about how difficult it was, <laughs> it was to do to a show it. with Jim. That's what that was the first one. Yep, the first. He was trying to figure out a way to shoot a show, and that was the show they wanted to shoot. Like, fuck it, just shoot anything. Like, it's just hard to work with. But let's shoot that. And then um, Chrissy had a chance to do reality TV. It didn't go the way she wanted to. So I was like, well, I got this opportunity at VH1. Maybe if I call Jim McAmey, he might want to do, and I called him, and they was like, yeah, let's do that. That sounds like a plan. And it was birth from there. And then from there, this is what you have here. But it was, a lot what? of people made with some money, man. Hey, what, is your mom shooting the show? Cause what is what was Ray J doing at your mom's house? I have no idea, man. I didn't know. I ain't know whether to jump on Ray J when I got in there. Now. Like, what is you doing about mama house? I thought he man? was lying because it sounded so random. <laughs> nah, Ray J's cool, man. Very, he's hilarious. Like he's a hilarious. Oh, no, that was one of the one of the funniest nights in my in my life watching him in my mom's house. But shout out to Ray J, man. I mean, you know, Ray J's always into something when it comes to production or television mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. electronics and things like that. So he was in there talking some business with my mom's actually about some TV stuff. So that was that, that's what that play was about. Now they push your T reach out? They push your T reach out and say, Jim, you bugging. I'm top 50. Um, I don't think push your T gonna reach out to me. I'm not the type of person who's gonna reach out to me about my opinion. You heard? Mm -hmm. Y'all not cool? <laughs> I mean, I ain't cool with him like that. Oh, I, don't yeah, him, I don't know him like that. I yeah. know him to say, what's up? Give him a pound, mm -hmm. you dig? And I wasn't trying to diss him and just they asked me a question. And, you know, I get very excited and things like that, but I don't think, my phone ain't the line to be calling. <laughs> Tell Jim me is funny. Jim, I wasn't trying to diss him, but Jim said he's not top fifty. I don't think he was selling drugs and crack like that. Like Jim, I mean, Jim yeah. don't stop. He didn't, Jim just keep going. Jim said, not his own dope. Not, not his, his own, own crack. Dope. Not his own. I dope. mean, maybe I might have took it a little bit far. A little bit far. Maybe Jesus. I could have said something else to get my point across. And I don't want to sit up here looking like we using pussy tea for the butt of our joke and things like that. But I mean, it's like it, it is what it is, man. Like we're not going to sit up here and go back and forth about. It. I don't really care. I don't. Do you know? Can Can you tell me? Can you sing along the five Pusha T records right now? His records. Yes. His records? Yeah. Name I love Pusha. Nostalgia. Oh, Dream he was a Pusha T fan. You like, know, you know. When, I didn't know he had fans like no. that. Can you name five Pusha T records? Dreaming no, his past. records. See, but, see, no, can you no? But can see, you rap to but, five push? I'm, I, can I, I can't rap five. Ver, no, all right, no, can can't. you can you rap to but five? Also, wait, wait, wait. Can you rap? If I push a T, if I push a T records, not the records he's featured on. If I push a T records came on right now, could you rap them? You could rap five push a T records. Yeah. No, could you? Could you? Look, wait. Could you rap <laughs> five push a T records right now if they started playing? What do you could, mean rap? Could, like the hook? Like, or just, like could like, you sing them? Verse for yeah, verse, they came on like certain joints. Like no, 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 not sorry. No, I'm, no, to no, I'm saying, could you rap? Uh, all right, could yeah. you rap five J verses if they came? Oh, could absolutely. You, could on. you rap with five Drake verses if they came on? Nah. 
You, you lying. But I'm not, I've never been a big I've never been a big Drake fan. You're lying because you, lying. you work at radio. If five Drake records <laughs> came on <laughs> right now, he could do you would be yeah, rapping rap them. Five Drake because they play on the radio all day. I know, I know, I know, I know, but the rap lyric to lyric like I could do Jay, I, I couldn't. But, but, but he's still dope. And he clipped. Yeah, that's Jim started, I could, Jim I started, I started tapping clips. his foot before he did that. Before he did <laughs> I'm, gonna say, I'm just going to say that because I don't want to get it because them niggas will be like, yo, Jim way, way well. And I'm shout out to Pusha T. I love your soul, my dog. You're not in my top 50. You might be in Charlemagne's top 50 and things like Pusha that. But top 50. you haven't done that much for me in my life. Like, I didn't never want to beat like Pusha. I, didn't never, I never had a Pusha moment in my life. I never thought, like, you dig? Like, where I'm from, niggas want to be like you if you was really that dude and that rapper and things well, like that. Well, you want to be like, like Pusha? Shit. He was influenced by Pusha? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, cool. That's why Pusha did the Mr. Me Too record. Okay, cool. You a very strong Pusha T fan. <laughs> You heard? And I don't care because people be like, Jim, look at Jim talking. Nigga, you is nowhere near the top 50. You top 950. You crazy. Like, you think I don't really care. I would, I would say that Pusha had a, you know, I went to school in Virginia where, where Pusha was from, and I know Pusha, Pusha a long time. He All right, could you, could, if five, five Jim Jones records play right now on this radio, could you, could you sing along to them? No? All right, cool. Five Jim Jones records. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get. Yeah. Five Jim Jones records play yeah. right. Five Jim Jones records. You can't tell me five Pusha T records, but you can tell me five Jim Jones records. Five you can't records. tell me five Pusha T records, but you can say five. So what are we talking about? You want me to get into the real semantics of this shit? Like, what are we talking about? I think Pusha Top 50, man. All right, cool. But you <laughs> can't. Nice, yo. We can't. Put on. Let's start playing said, some Pusha T records. You said he was He's nice. nice. Yeah, you I'm you not saying. Wait. Nice. He's not. Not. Well, now listen. Two, that's two different things. Being in a category and being nice is, you heard, is I could name 10 niggas inside of Rucker that should have been in the NBA. <laughs> Not to say it like that, I'm dead serious. Should have been in the NBA going crazy because they're that nice. Being nice and being in the category is two different things. See, that's what I rank the top rappers on. I rank them on actual rap. Like, who can really spit? So. You know, so I got I gotta put Pusha in the top fifty for rap, just rap. We just talking bars. So this, so what does we gauge in the top fifty on? Just rap. I don't be, so I anybody don't be, can slide. So anybody can slide lists. in there. That's what I, I don't be knowing with these lists. But if you talking cap- about somebody supposed to be the top fifty greatest of all time, what are we gauging it on? That's then? true. That's what I want. You heard? Right? Mm-hmm. It gotta be. A, it gotta be everything. It can't just because he could he could rap nice. Man, we could go a bunch of battle rappers that could rap nice right now mm-hmm. and, and go crazy. They nice as hell. You heard? Mm-hmm. But what else has he bring to the game? Did did, did, did did he make people want to dress like him? Did he have some slang that everybody was talking like him? Uh, there'll be the girls, all the girls wanted to do him. Like, what is the, you, you did? He like, definitely created slang. Which one? This, uh, sorry, nigga, I'm trying to come home. Like, in this era with all of these rappers who be- What slang like did he create? Snitch. Sorry, oh, nigga, I'm trying to come home. That's an acronym. Snitch? That's an acronym? Yeah, sorry, sorry nigga, nigga, I'm trying to, I'm trying to come home. Well, I don't even that? know nobody that even know the acronym, come nigga. Come on, Jim, for real. I, 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 no, like, but besides Pusha T, like, we can't forget the clips. Like, the clips was- uh, Nah, the clips was- The clips was- That's different. The amazing group that- Popular demand was- That's different. Hard That's different. The clips were dope. They had the record grinding. They had- What happened to that boy, right? You dig? Like, so I'm not- It's not like I don't know the music. We're not gonna sit here and say that, but the clips and Pusha T, two different things. I would think you would like Pusha, Jim. I didn't say I don't I'm like him. Albums. He make great albums. Like I never listened to one whole Pusha T album. You gotta listen to a Pusha album. Nah, he Pusha make never. Music, man. He does, he spit. Never, I never listened to a whole Pusha T album. He just had an album that won a Grammy. Do y'all know any of the records on that album well, that won a Grammy? He was nominated, nominated for yeah. Grammy, yeah. His last two just, albums were nominated for Grammy. Okay, yeah. cool. Do y'all know any records on these on yes. these Grammy nominated? <laughs> yes. What, The Diet last Coke? album is Almost Dry, Diet Coke? Grampleton Road, My Neck, My Wrist. Uh, when else we didn't listen to this shit out of your basement because I never hear it nowhere. <laughs> you heard? Like I never hear it nowhere. Like no disrespect. Like where? Like you did? And like 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 and let's Come get on. like people don't crucify me because let's not make this about oh me and him because it's Why not about me happened? and him. You heard? Because you heard? Like it's not about me and him. I'm just talking. Oh, to, get, like I'm, it's this why I don't want to do no more interviews. <laughs> I don't want to do no more interviews. What does it call man. for me, Jim? Let's just what does it call? That what shit is all fucked up, man. <laughs> Actually, I'm about to run. I'm about to crawl in this. Morning. Right now. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> fuck, man. <laughs> man, fuck it, man. You got the logo for your label, right? The coffin? Yeah, that's a logo for my label. Word, word. They got me all fucked up and flustered now. Man. <laughs> man, it's just fucked up in here, man. You dig? Shout out to everybody out here that's a rapper, man. I mean, I don't even try to. I'm not trying to diss nobody. I ain't, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a bit of a comedian at times, so man. So, so pardon me for that. Um, 
It, it is what it is, man. Work. But just don't call my phone. This, this ain't the type of phone you want to call for any type of smoke. You heard? That shit is a smoke detector. You better leave that <laughs> phone alone. You heard? You better continue to give me high fives when you see me. You heard? That's all I'm about is good energy. Let's continue to throw this love out there. You heard? Champagne toasts and all that. We all live a pretty yeah, good, good life, man. You heard? One time Jim called me. Was, Jim called me. I said something he didn't like. Jim was like, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and that's right. I'm like, my bad. I can tell about things. Like, do not what listen, was that? Do not listen to him. He do said, not listen to him. I'm not the type said, of person. I'm a very loving person, man. Years ago. Years ago. This is, this now, Jim, Jim has done some wild stuff. I seen Jim say, the first comedian to walk out the building. <laughs> I said, damn. I said, oh, I'm not walking out the building. You might think I'm a comedian. Jim damn, so man. I was a terrible, was man. Too back, back Jim then. said, what was that? You don't play with me like that. Because if you play with me like that, then everybody else going to think they're going to play with me like that. Then I'm they, not gonna play with none of y'all. They, yeah, like, oh, like that is that we got that we got a problem. <laughs> like yo, like nah, let me stop, man. Just God damn. Man. I grew up hard, man. Got a part of me, man. I just, shit, man. I you know I don't know, man. I'm just but right now I'm in a place of love in my heart, and 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 it kind of gets twisted when people ask me ask me these difficult questions, and I don't know how to answer them answer without them honestly. Yeah, that's, that's you know, your you know what I mean. That's so. Okay, can, can we leave it at this? Just my opinion. It Absolutely. is your opinion. I don't Absolutely. want no. I don't want no push of tea smoke. I don't want to end up in none of his raps. Ugh. Jim, you dig? No, I think that. You know what he's doing. You know what he's Yeah, like, they, they, like, they, 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 he, I, I say he's nice, right? <laughs> Dumb nice. The boy know yeah. how to talk about some yeah, cocaine, yeah. you heard? Yeah. He talking about Pablo numbers, you heard? Yeah. Like, that boy talk about cocaina. You understand it, <laughs> God damn it. I ain't even saying that he ain't nice. <laughs> Shit. But you was mad at J.D. Kiss. I was mad at Jada Kiss. So you felt Jada Kiss should have released some music after Versus? No, nah, yeah, I wasn't mad at Jada Kiss. I just was like, God damn, if I would have caught that victory, I would have had a record out tomorrow. Mm. I'm I'm all going all the way with this. Like, I'm using this opportunity to get a super bag. Everybody calling his phone. He could have, he could have did, bro. I'm just, and this is me, because now people going to be like, oh, now you trying to talk about Jada. You don't talk <laughs> about Jada like that. Like, you know I love Jada to death. Mm -hmm. Jada. Top 50, top five, dead or alive. When we talk about niggas that's nice and been outside that I can vouch for, that I seen it, I'm going Jada. So who's your top five? Who's who's Jim Jones? Oh, don't do without, that. Without taking anybody Dude, this else. Is this, try, this is crazy. This is crazy. This is Jada. This is so it. This is, 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 is how it goes all bad. You who heard? Who's the top, top five? five? Like, <laughs> this is these cat. This, this is. But I'm just saying. I, I said Jada top okay, five, so dead or alive. That's his hashtag right there. But oh, you see what I'm saying? You got four more. You know what I think people forget about Jim? Jim is also an executive. He's an A&R. Jim is an A&R. All right. All right. Minus 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 Tupac and Biggie because we got to keep them. On their own list at all times. Okay, Everybody you put, you can't, that's a, you Facts. just, like, we're gonna put them to the side because we already know they mm -hmm. there already, you heard? Jay, mm -hmm. Drake, mm -hmm. Jada, mm -hmm. I just wanna tell you, Charlamagne don't feel like Drake's been in the game long enough, but so far, I'm with you I think Drake, I think Drake belongs to be up there. For him and Kendrick. Nope. They gonna be there. I just think he did what ten I, years, eleven. I think Drake years? is definitely there, but I feel like it, especially the way we've seen hip hop grow, I feel like you got to give me at least fifteen. Nah, that boy did it for fifteen years. Yeah, I, it I thought it was eleven. Drake dropped in 07. Really? Yeah. Nah. You smoking crack rock? Drake 07? dropped in 07. When the record unforgettable came out. When that when that when so uh, far that gone? Came out. I count so yeah, far gone. Yeah, it was on high ninety seven when I played that. Bro, record. Yeah, Drake dropped in 07. I was on I was on the tour bus listening to his music with Weezy just signed him, bro. He's been in the game that long. Okay. He's been in. All right. So, guy, you got two more. Um, I don't, man. It's so it's a, it's hard. It's hard because it's like yo, you think of now you got it like it's hard. It's it's kind of hard. It's kind of hard because you got the Big Daddy Kings. You got the, yeah. the Rock Cams. You got the Slick Ricks. You got the Karis Ones. You got the like like you shit me. They gotta be in this top fizzy. Like this is people that shaped my life. So then they'd be like yo, I gotta. It's like man, how do I? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. but the, the the three that I just said like. For Jay, from since I've been outside hustling to get into the game, he's like been like the blueprint to all hustlers. Whether you was in the music industry or whether you was outside of the street, and what he did for the streets and that that adrenaline he gave you when you put that his CD in the car mm -hmm. can't be duplicated. And we ain't even gonna have super CDs no more for it to even be that feeling to be duplicated right, and, right. and things like that. And then for the last 15 years, the, the, for the last 10 years, the way Drake been moving on his own accord and putting on and taking care of his people and how they be moving is phenomenal. I'm a total fan of that. Um, 
Jada. So I, 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 we done did uh, Black Door uh, performances with Jada in Harlem and things like that in, in, in 96, 95, things like that. So I've been a fan of them since they have been doing clue tapes and things like that back in the days, the locks. And just watching them and Jada continuously was able to excel, uh, reinvent itself, stay relevant. Mm -hmm. um, nobody was able to push him off his pivot. Like he stayed firm in who he, who, who he has been. Jada top five dead or alive, and he's shown us time and time again Absolutely. um through so many things he did in in, in, in verses and not just my verses you heard mm -hmm. every verse that he did right, he right, showed right. that he's a sh right. he, he showed his showmanship when it comes to performing and entertaining and that's a whole another side of being on the top fifty list when it comes to and he's captivating still the, same, the crowd he's, he's still, still the same from the original he, from the he don't you know I mean it's just Jada but his skill set when it comes to doing music and rapping and when he does is you can't take it away from him nobody so from I, Harlem in your top five Jim. Um, um, I, you, know, you know, I like I, I, Joel's and Cam vicariously always in my top five because I've lived a life with them and I understand mm -hmm. the music they was doing and and, and you dig and you know I always tell people Joel's been one of my favorite rappers since we we signed them and things like that. Oh, but he hasn't been able to put out no music in such a long time. So waiting for him to get back in his mode mm -hmm. and things like that and get back at it, but. I don't know who the last two would be. I would have to come back to y'all on the next interview uh -huh. we do and probably complete that five. I'm not going to just do that because hip hop is like religion to me. Like, you know, I, I really followed followed every step of hip hop. I listened to all the music to learn how to hustle, learn how to get my girls. Like hip hop has been the journey for me, man. I don't know about y'all. It's been like a pamphlet Absolutely. to life. Like, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, so. And then I, I want to ask, you know, at one time y'all, you and Jay and Dipset and, and Rockefeller were, were, were kind of funny. Was there ever a time where y'all thought y'all were gonna get it on? Because I heard the story of you being in the studio and Jay pulling you to the side and be like, you know, if any gangsters come here, I need to talk to them. Nah, before. that was all on love. That was, when I see, that's another thing. People be like, oh shit, like he trying to play Jay, like he had the bludgeon. And no, I'm telling y'all that there was a, a time in baseline when we was going to baseline and we were signed there and the way that I was moving, I was coming in with the gangbangers and things like that. And that was Jay House. And one day he was like, I'm with all of it, but just let them know this is my house. They got to holler at you dig at the king at that time, like this is me. And that's all I was saying and things like that. But um, yeah. That's when Jay was cripping? He was cripping? I don't know. They always say that. That's always a rumor. <laughs> I never heard that. You just cripping? <laughs> no, let me stop. I've never heard that. Was that. A rumor. No, that was a rumor. I mean, I don't know if it was a rumor. It's always been said in the street. You know, JB cripping. That's yeah. like this, this thing in the street. Nah, you know, Jay Crip. Like, remember, look at let me show you this picture. You see me throwing up right? Like, you know how the streets the streets turn anything into anything. But I don't I don't know if he was ever gang banging. I doubt that. I don't, it don't seem to me like he was gang banging. It seemed like he was more slanging than anything. Um, there were the times that things got um sticky. Sticky, how my man, how my man Styles say it? Um, what's that word? He chippy, chippy, Ch chippy, chippy, get a little chippy. Yeah, always got chippy. I kept a chip on my shoulder. I wanted the chips. You heard? I was bad at that time. I was looking for any type of anything I could get into at that time when it came to the other side. At that time, it was that's how I felt. It was on. It was on. There's been a lot of times I. But when we write a book, we'll really talk about it because I don't want to get here and start talking about it. And then you got people that's outside and you got to call the people like, yo, you heard what he said. Like, you know, I don't want to. Your reputation preceded you. When I moved up here in 06, Wendy told me three people not to ever talk about. Who's that? Uh, Jim Jones and Diplomats. That's facts. Terror Squad. That's facts. I think it was G when it did the time. I definitely remember Jim Jones and Diplomat and Terror Squad. And then she played me a, a interview with Jim spazzed out and bounced on her. <laughs> <laughs> those three, those three um, didn't pull up on you. The Terror Squad. You don't want to pull up on Terror Squad. Don't talk about Terror Squad. Shout out to Joe. Them boys was loose back in the yeah, day. Yeah, they were crazy. R.I.P. Oh, Pun, man. One of my favorite individuals in this world, man. Got to, got yeah, to have a great- You knew You knew Pun. You knew Big. I, but I didn't know Big. I didn't get to actually meet oh, Big. I, that was one person that did. Cam got to meet Big. That's how he actually got his deal. But Big just telling him. But as far as everybody else, I pretty much I I knew every everybody else. But Big Pun was a comedian. Mm -hmm. Then got us kicked off planes, all type of stuff. Um, incredible spirit. Uh, he used to come get me out my spot in the Bronx and take me to the wedge and, and throw money at the strippers extremely hard. He was the first person I seen make it rain. Like, but I got a lot of stories about that since just, or, with so many artists and things like that mm -hmm. from how long I've been in the game. I seen era after era mm -hmm. after era. And I seen people come, I seen people go. I seen the largest artists turn to the smallest artists. I seen some of the smallest artists turn to the largest artists. I mean, it's just people you thought was gonna last, they didn't last. And mm -hmm. all of this I'm saying to still be here Mm -hmm. All these years later, and doing 
I want to say it like that. I'm I'm doing pretty good for myself. That yeah. people are probably not doing as good as I am right now. That were slated to be whoever they were supposed to be in the game and things like that. And that's goes to show what perseverance and staying down for yourself and being able to come up and things like that. Like I refuse to. I'm not. Man, listen. I'm happy to be here, man. This game has just, this hip hop culture, it was 50 years, has saved my life so many times, mm -hmm. over and over and over again. I can't say that, and I'm I'm grateful for that because I, I, I didn't have to have this opportunity. I didn't, hey, this is not something that you could just go out and get. You know what I mean? You, just something you gotta work very hard for. You have to be in the right place or the right time or it might not happen for you. It's not like basketball where you can excel and then go to college and then excel and then you have, high, you know what I mean? No, this is, this is spooky to how to, to, to become right. in this position, you know what I mean? Like you don't know if that's ever gonna happen and things like that and it's happened for me so many times so I'm so grateful, you know what I mean? Like really grateful, like you have no idea. People try to take me out of this game a long time ago. They try to, uh, but I just refuse to stay there. Like I'm always gonna get up and fight for my cause, but I'm very, very grateful. Let that, let, besides all the bullshit people talk about me, besides all the crazy shit that I do throughout the years, I'm extremely grateful to be part of this hip hop culture. That's what it is. Well, the album is out right now, Back, back in, in My, my prime. prime. Make sure you pick Combo. it up. What you wanna hear off the album? Let's play it now. Shout out to Young Bird, one of the most incredible producers out there. I was I was very blessed to be able to do this album. Um, very dope album. Shout out to Chrissy. This album is pretty much uh, written about her in so many different ways. Um, I would say let's go with Gunshot. Gunshot featuring Bean. Um, but I thank you, man. I just want to tip my hat to y'all. Y'all keep doing things for us to look at and be inspired by y'all. Um, BT move. Y'all in a new building. Y'all got thrones that y'all sitting on. You know what I mean? What, what could be better than this? But I seen y'all. I seen y'all grind the same like same way y'all seen me grind and things like that from the beginning. I know things wasn't this good as as it is now right. coming mm -hmm. up and things like that. But y'all continue to break down barriers inside of this journalism game and when it comes to being on the radio and things like that and taking number one morning shows and. Oh man, tap you, that, you know what I mean? We'll tap you tap it. yourself on the back sometime, man. You heard? Yes, sir. It's and this guy's rich, man. Oh yeah, you got it. This guy's rich, it. man. You know, this guy's rich over here. I'm, yeah, I'm, you, I'm happy to be making a living. You know what I need? I need a psychiatrist. Is that a psychiatrist? Yeah, I got you. That's what that's what you call a psychologist, therapist. a therapist. 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 Yeah, yeah. I need a good therapist. I remember you asked me that before. I do, but yeah. I need a good therapist. And so it's, it's kind of scared talking to a black therapist sometimes. You think they might tell you business and things like that, because that's what black people do. So I'm like, yeah. man, I don't know about that. But, but you sit down and talk to a therapist and be open and honest and talk your life? Yeah. I need somebody to talk to, God damn it. Like, shit, I be talking to myself in the mirror. Like, how are we going to solve this problem? Jim, stop. But no. Nah, um, I'm going to get you. I got you. I'm going to get you. Yeah, get Jim it. said to me one time, Jim said, I think I got anger issues. I was like, uh, duh. You think? <laughs> duh. I think I, I think I, I think I, I think I worked on it. I got that down. I got that, I got that part. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, All man. Right. I appreciate you, yes, man. Sir. All right. It's Jim Jones. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.